It is International Women's Day, and we are very, very lucky to have um, three beautiful, strong, powerful women in this team. That's really kind, because mm. my last instruction to you, as Taylor Swift was singing about being an anti-hero, was don't be a jerk in this break, yeah. oh, <laughs> because on. there's a lot of pressure on us to deliver. All yes. Right. Oh. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to try and do something just a little bit different. Actually, it was set last year, but... Um, it's a really, really powerful message. We've asked Newsreader Abby yep. and yourself, Jody, mm-hmm. to pen a letter to your 13 year old selves. So, who would like to go first? Not Abby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shaking. Oh, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You go first, dive in. Uh, okay. It's a safe space. It's a safe space. You're for fine. The whole of Adelaide. <laughs> Take a breath. Anyway, okay. You're all good. To dear 13-year-old Abby, strap yourself in, little miss. It's going to be a hell of a bumpy ride. Trust me when I say you need to wear more sun cream. Also, stop saying 30 years old. It's actually really (laughs) not. You're a bit of a late bloomer, but I promise when you do finally find the things that make you feel alive, you'll thrive. In a few years' time, you'll meet a boy who'll be the first person in the world you love more than just a friend. (laughs) Great, I'm crying already. He'll make you cry with laughter, he'll be fun and silly and make you think about the world in a different way. But he'll decide that this world isn't where he wants to stay and you'll spend the next 20 years asking yourself what could you have done to make him stay. (sighs) Grief is not linear. You won't just wake up one morning and be okay without him. You'll cry a lot, you'll be really angry and the pain will make it hard to open yourself up to love in the future. But please promise me, don't ever close yourself off. We all have different pathways and maybe in this life you'll find your person, get married and have kids or maybe you just have heaps of sausage dogs and a really, really (laughs) big wardrobe. You like to be hard on yourself, extremely hard and we have so much hard work to change this and I want you to start now. Your worth is not defined by the number on the scale or the size of your clothes. While we're at it, fat is not an insult. If someone uses that term to offend you, it says more about them than you. Work out because it makes you feel good, not because you're told to. Eat well because you want to feel good, not because you're forced to. You will eventually find the answer answer as to what's going on inside your body and it will help you take control of a very, very long and exhausting weight journey. Take opportunities when they arise. You will be asked to move interstate one day for work and for God's sake, say yes. Work the rest out later and don't worry, tank your sausage dog is more resilient (laughs) than what you think. You will learn what you think is what you attract and when you figure this out, my darling, oh my goodness, you're a scary force to be reckoned with. It will take your career all over Queensland before you return home and you will become the person that you at this tender age of 13 can only dream about one day. Be kind, leave a legacy behind that people remember because you had a smile on your face and did what you could for the person less fortunate than you. Please be nicer to your parents. They love and care about you and only only want what's best. Life is short. Pay your taxes and, for God's (laughs) sakes, pay those bloody parking fines. Ask for help. Stand up for what you believe in, even when your voice shakes. But most of all, please, please, please forgive yourself and decide much sooner in life to love yourself. It'll make things so much easier. Love your 33-year-old self. Oh, Oh, I lasted two seconds and started crying. Wow. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Oh, goodness me. Um, Abby, we, oh, we, we're we on tears about 10 seconds in, I reckon. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's something, a story I don't really talk about. It happened um, my first sort of, I guess you could call him boyfriend. Um, yeah, he decided to take his life. And it's something that you just, you know, I happened 16 years ago and I keep, uh, you think that you're over it and you think that, you know, it happened so long ago and I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But I've recently gone back to therapy and realised that, you know, it's just something that you'll never actually completely deal with. Yeah. Um, so anyone out there listening, and I'm a huge advocate for, for mental health in general, but, yeah, if you're struggling, please call Lifeline. It's 13 11 14, I think it is. Um but call and get some help because, yeah, the people that are left behind, it's really, really tough. So, yeah. Have you well done? 
Thank that you. was so well brave. done. That was amazing. <laughs> that was so incredibly brave. Can we come back and do oh. mine? Because I need to regroup <laughs> after that. I genuinely do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible stuff. So yeah, Jody, we'll get your letter coming up, but we, <laughs> we just need to regroup for a second. <laughs> Sorry. Bloody hell, oh, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, um, are you going to be able to read the news? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to run back in and try my best. All right. Uh, Jody's letter to a 13 year old self coming up. It's Jody and Hazy. Good morning. It is International Women's Day, and newsreader Abby was in here just before, and she delivered her letter to her 13 year old self. And was incredibly vulnerable, and I'm so proud of her. That was amazing, and I can't stop crying. <laughs> How are you feeling, Abby? Uh, I feel actually like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, to be honest. Got through the news, so that was good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just got 24 minutes to go, and now I've got to get through mine, so I need your support, yeah, please. That's why I'm in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, far up for this show. <laughs> You've been sort of pacing around the studio you for a while. You just said to me, is. why are you crying? Oh, I, was so <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to lighten the mood. Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. It's going to be a lot. A lot to unpack. Good luck. All right. We're doing it now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are we doing it right now? <laughs> right. <laughs> I thought it was like a song. No. I thought I had a song to regroup. Okay. All right, then. Let's do it. Okay. Dear 13 year old Jody, where do I start? Let's start with that haircut. Your mum's going to take you to a hairdresser's in Hobart and suggest a short back and sides, keeping the curl on top. <laughs> <laughs> Which means no human boy will look at you for the next 12 months. Hang in there, it's going to grow back. Jodes, and this is the only time you're going to third person yourself, there are five things that you need to know about what's going to inf unfold in your life. The first, and that's number five, stop telling yourself you aren't enough. I mean, really stop it because you actually are. You have good intentions and a lot of empathy and a nice heart, and that's a good thing, so don't apologise for it. You're also going to like sportsmen, like a lot, and that's okay. <laughs> You'll marry a couple. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Number four, you're going to feel like a total imposter in your career and it's going to be exacerbated by people tell saying truly awful things on the internet about you. But you need to calm down because things are going to be okay. And just know you aren't alone in feeling like a woman who's a total fraud in the workplace. Number three, I'm going to say, this is like yours, Abs, be nicer to your body. You're going to spend your days telling yourself you aren't thin enough, you're not pretty enough, and then when you hit your 40s, you're going to look back at photos back in the day and feel like a total moron for berating yourself every single day for like 20 years. It's crazy. Number two, Jodes, you're going to have a lot of children. You're going to have four of the most beautiful girls you can ever imagine, and they're going to bring you so much love, light, and joy Hug them and love them hard because you will never do anything more worthwhile in your life than raise those beautiful little blonde babies. So work a little bit less and inhale those girls more and show them that being a woman is about being strong and being capable. Number one, you're going to meet some men. <laughs> and the first couple will almost break you. But hang in there because you'll find reserves of strength you didn't know existed when it all falls apart and those men don't define who you are. Ride the wave because you will eventually find your forever person and he's going to heal your heart and you will marry him and be forever grateful every day for his kindness. The other guy you'll meet will be your work saviour and that you, Andrew Hayes. He will be kind, talented and obsessed with MBA and he's going to push buttons on the panel that he's not supposed to. <laughs> but he will become one of your best friends and make you laugh every day and he will never understand how grateful you are to him for being exactly who he is. So finally, young Joji, you just need to know that you're going to be okay and being a woman is a gift and you'll be surrounded by other incredible women. <laughs> So embrace them, make it your mission to bring light into every room you walk in and definitely don't invest in marrying Ivor Davies from Ice House. That's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Oh, well done, Jodes. Um, it does give us a bit of an excuse to play this as well. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> a different life, maybe. But well done. Well, no. How do you feel now? Uh, yeah, it 
kind of cathartic, isn't it? Do you know what's really interesting? Because for me, I'm new to journalism. I've been in this for five years, and I look at someone like you, and I just go like Jodie Oddy, incredible. I was so nervous when they're like, "It's Jodie who's going to be doing the Brecky Show." I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" But you know, to know that there's like there's every woman out there who judges themselves and who thinks that they're not good enough and thinks they're imposter. I look at you and go, "If I have a career like Jodie's, I'd be stoked." And to know that you face those things. And, you know, I come in every morning and I have to remind myself, like, I've got really bad resting bitch face. Everyone put the coffee in a bad mood, but I'm not. And, you know, I've got to I've got to stop myself. Like, I sat in there for the first few weeks, oh, Jodie hates me, no, she hates me. Like, just stupid stuff like that because we just, that's what we're programmed to be like. And it's, mm. it's so frustrating and I just want women to know out there, like, we're all in this together. Oh, my God. We're a team and just we've got to stop this judging ourselves so badly. But that was amazing. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Thank I, you for being so open and honest. Absolutely I, um, beautiful. I was upset when you said that we had to do this, but it's been good. So thank you for pushing me. Producer Sean. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Judge Jody. The tricky one this morning. Dear Judge Jody, I've been married to my wife for 10 years. I'm 12 years older uh, and my wife than my wife, which makes me 45 in May. We have two beautiful children, which keeps our day bright and lively each day. Recently, my wife has discussed she would like more children in the next few years. So if he's 45, that makes her 33, right? Yeah? Yep. Good, good maths, Jody. Good. You've got this. Good mathematics. However, since meeting, we've always spoke about only having two. I want to ensure any child we bring into the world has the best opportunities, which includes us being active as possible with the kids. I'm now 45 and starting to slow down. However, my wife is raring to go. I'm worried about being a geriatric dad, so I've, I have a vasectomy appointment booked in. What? And my wife doesn't know about it. You can't do that. The guilt is starting to creep in and the appointment is on Monday. If I tell my wife she'll be distraught, as she said she'd leave me if I got the snip. Please help. I'm not sure what to do. Ooh. Ooh, that is a tricky one. First reaction. To snip or not to snip? <laughs> First reaction. Come on, man. <laughs> you can't go and have a vasectomy without discussing it with your wife. Am I right? I mean, head off and maybe have a couple of beers secretly with, with some mates. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe head off and go to the, I don't know, go put uh, some money on some horses. Or. Five, ten dollars max. Or maybe, you or know. Or secretly so go down and have an operation to make sure that you can't become a father that again. That is, um, okay, the, the dishonesty part is insane for a start. But I do understand to a degree him being 45 and wanting to be around for his kids. So I had my last, I had my fourth child I reckon I was 44 and that worries me as well like if I really sit down and think about it she's three so in 20 years when she's 23 I'm gonna be 67 <gasps> oh my god that's horrifying 67's uh, young these days you reckon yeah 67's fine yeah I know but it does occur to you that Oh my goodness, having children late in life can be tough. Well, get your head around this. At the age of 67, you will not be playing netball, okay? Yeah, I will. You'll be giving it up. I'll you be going blow to out your Achilles. I'll be going to Priceline Stadium when I'm 67, and I'll be playing Tuesday night netball. It might be C3s, C4s. Who cares? I'll still be playing netball, yeah, and okay. you can't stop me. Right, so <laughs> I a couple of, couple of busted ACLs That's a ruling. stop you. That's a ruling. Hey! Hey, sustained. <laughs> so the dishonesty part <laughs> there is as well. Already nice and busy with the gavel. The dishonesty part as well. Does that mean potentially he has the snip and he doesn't tell her and she thinks that they're trying, but actually they're not? Well, see, and there keeps on being a lot of disappointment, probably on two fronts from her part. But that's, that's what I was thinking. He could never tell her and then he could just be like, oh, well, you know, obviously it's not meant to be. But that, I don't like it. It's just completely and utterly dishonest. Where are you at? You've had two kids. You're going to go again? Uh, yes, I would hope that uh, oh, maybe we've got one more. Cool. We'll potentially try for another. One more in you? Yes. And then I reckon after that, mm. then I'd be more than happy to get the snip. Yeah, okay. And as a big FM radio stunt, you're going to perform my vasectomy. <laughs> 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 Whoa, Nova! <laughs> I love that for us. Jump on socials, have a look. It's just going to bring us closer together, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I prefer you to do it than Greg Oddy, because I think 
Greg would be very, very time efficient and he'd get it done before lunch. Hey, guess what? Adelaide's got a senior's netball comp. Our producers just informed me for 65 pluses. Why don't... <laughs> I mean, sign why, me up. Why don't women value their Achilles and their ACLs? <laughs> What are we living in? Let's anyway, we're starting to digress. We should go to Abby in the newsroom and see if she's got some thoughts on this one. Abs, what do you reckon? Morning, team. Um, look, so I don't have children, but my sisters do. I think there's a common theme here, though. What is with the people of Adelaide in relationships not being able to communicate with each other? All of your judge duties are, oh, I want to do this or I want to do this, but there's no talking to each other. That's so, why this... Abby... You don't understand. This is why this segment exists. Well, that's it. But, like, it's ridiculous. You need to discuss this. Also, I my thought process is that she's still quite young and so she's more than likely going to be home with the kids looking after them. Yeah. So he, yes, he's 45, but, you know, if he's at home with the child and having to do everything, then maybe it's a little bit different. But I'm assuming that he'll be... You know, are you as always, Abby in the newsroom wants more information, <laughs> which we don't have. More information. Right. Anyway, the, the, the bottom line is, town. the bottom line is, bloody communicate with each other. Oh, I know. I agree. Hey, he's worried about being a geriatric geriatric dad. Did you know your wife, Cara, might know this? When you turn thirty-five, that's deemed a geriatric pregnancy. Really? From the age of thirty-five. How outrageous is that? Mm, that Remember is when really my obstetrician said, this, he goes, this is a geriatric pregnancy. I nearly punched him in the face. So I've called you a geriatric. I'm actually technically correct. No, you're not. I'll because punch you, you in the face. you pregnancy after the age of 35. But I will also punch you in the face if you say it to it's me. It's a real geriatric move. Punch <laughs> me in the face. 13, 20, 20, we need some jurors on this one. Is it okay for him to go and get a vasectomy and not tell his wife? And she's 33 and she wants more children. Should he just zip it and get on with it? All right. Judge Jody. All right, we're going to Judge Jody this morning. It says, Dear Judge Jody, should you be playing netball at 67? No, we digress. <laughs> we were just talking. No, talk bang that hammer. <laughs> We were just talking about being older parents and basically he wants to know if he should go... He's got a vasectomy booked in because he's 45. He doesn't want to have any more kids. He's got two. She's only 33 and she wants to have another one. She is, and he's worried about being a geriatric dad. Thoughts on this one? 13, 24, 10. Get involved. Um, I do like the text lines going off as well. Oh, is there? <laughs> What's this on 0400 919 919. Uh, this one from... Anonymous in Paraka says she will know he won't walk right for a week after. There's no way he can hide it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously I'd imagine, yes, that recovery would be a little bit painful for a few days. All right, let's get some jurors involved. And I'm also led to believe that there's a lot of swelling and yep. darkness in the area. Not when I perform your vasectomy, mate. You'll be fine. Oh, really? It's going to be a pristine operation. Great. Okay. Yeah. Please just spare the other bits as well, please. <laughs> Let's go to Hannah from Turingi. Hey, Hannah. What are your thoughts on this one? Hey. Hey, how you doing? If you hear Gr some blabbering in the background, I've got my toddler. She's ready to have a yarn as well. Great. Um, so I'm, doing my, I'm doing my PhD for assist control and reproductive rights. If a woman took out her marina and got pregnant, it would be reproductive coercion, right? This is exactly the same. Him not telling his wife is going to break down the entire relationship and deciding for her that she can't have another baby is the patriarchal society that we live in. Like, it's the ultimate patriarchal society. That's my feminist high horse. It would be, it, it would be detrimental to their relationship. And a little bit coercive controlling as well, oh. to add that for a flair. <laughs> Hannah well said there were so many big words in there that Hazy just is like <laughs> looking at me going, what? What does that mean? Hang what on, does patriarchy hang mean? Hey, can you coercive? repeat that, please? <laughs> <laughs> Hannah, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Hannah. Hannah needed to get that off her chest. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad she did. And the toddler was very passionate as well. Yes, exactly right. That's good. Uh, let's She's go a to, little feminist. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Morgan and Grange. Morgan, good morning to you. Good morning. How are we? Good, Morgan. Okay, thoughts on a husband going off to have a vasectomy without telling his wife? 
Um, see you later, mate. If that was me, <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> that he is, that is, no way, he's being a loser. <laughs> he needs to talk about that, he needs to tell her. I love that Hannah used all these um, massive words, eloquent words, <laughs> and Morgan jumps on and goes, he's a loser. Yeah, now you speak about my language, <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> I'm picking no up No way, loser, loser, see you later, you're done. Okay, my ruling on this one here is go, very, 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 very simple. Okay, I get that he's worried about being an older dad, but have the conversation with your wife for the love of God. You can't go off and get your bits done without telling her, without giving her the choice to say, hey, I don't want to have any more kids. What do you think about that? I mean, if I had a dollar for every time one of my mates went off and had a secret vasectomy, <laughs> I'd be swimming <laughs> There you go. Thoughts? You can still get involved as well by the text line, especially 0400 919 919. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. Well, Hazy, the whole family is in the studio at the moment because we feel like it's important that we know everything about the people we work with. Yes. We're moving forward, um, and it's the intimate little details about someone that lets you take the next step in developing a relationship. That's fair. And we're all about team here, so it is crucial that we know the background of all of you, and I'm looking at all of you. Mm. So, for example, um, producer Zoe's in. Um, Zoe, good morning. Good morning. Uh, give us a fun fact about you, please. Well, my go-to is that I've lived in 16 houses in 18 t- years, so moved a lot. I'm so sorry about your broken childhood. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we genuinely feel sad that no one loved you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Couldn't quite settle, could you? Yeah, character building. <laughs> Made new friends and then I had to go. It just really, really reads like some kind of um, really traumatising sitcom. It certainly explains why she's got so many issues, though, okay. right? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> So we're breaking barriers. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, news reader Abby, good morning. Good morning. Fun fact about yourself? Oh, there's a few, but let's go with my dogs became famous earlier, or oh, sorry, last year, when they became um, the ambassador dogs for the Prospect Council <laughs> for the very first for the very first dash hound race in the state. Oh, oh well done. Ambassador dogs. Yeah. 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 dogs. Um, and finally, that's a very good fun fact. And finally, producer Sean. Um, anything we should know about you? What have you got? Because we're we're trying to uh, unravel this uh, onion. Yep. And geez, Joe, there's a few layers in oh, there. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never seen an onion with so many layers on the outside. <laughs> Go on, then. Uh, good morning. Uh, look, I've got a few fun facts. So, um, outside of work, I'm a giant pumpkin judge. What? Of course you are. What does that even mean? I could have picked that too, by the way. <laughs> Said so, nobody ever. So the giant pumpkins, which are about three to four hundred kilos. Yeah. Um, I judge and MC those awards in Queensland every Wait, year. And you MC? How do you how do you <laughs> even judge a pumpkin? Like from size, weight? What is it? Weight, definitely okay. weight. Right. So what sort of fee we talking for MC work when it comes to pumpkins? <laughs> um, I do it for the love. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I couldn't. I get paid. Could have picked that. I wouldn't have thought that a massive budget. <laughs> I even uh, pay for my own flights up to Queensland. <laughs> oh, sure. Anything else? Uh, look, for the past... Can I just hold you up there? Because the Pump- Pumpkin Growers Association of Queensland are going, should we pay an MC? Nah, this, this idiot wants to do it for yeah. free. <laughs> look, for the past 10 years, I've been a professional Christmas lights judge. Oh, oh you yeah, haven't. That's not a real thing. Yeah. I, um, for about a year and a half, played Cash Cow. What? On sunrise? Like uh, Any time Cash Cow was visiting the Sunshine State. Hang yeah. on. <gasps> you were the Cash you Cow? You were the Cash Cow? <laughs> <laughs> when, when they visited the Sunshine State, so at the Royal Queensland Show and at the Commonwealth Games. Wow. So the Cash Cow <laughs> isn't a real cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real cow. Real cow. <laughs> Anything else you want to reveal? Um, no, I think that's that it. it. That's oh, it. really? That's it? You good? Uh, yeah. Okay. Are, you, are you sure? Nothing that's to complete. see here? Nothing to see here. Okay, because okay. yeah, I think that's it. Because Hazy and I, <laughs> we got sent some stuff. We've done our research. <laughs> oh, oh boy. boy, what about this? Uh, just try and wrap your head around what we're about to say, because this <laughs> might be an actual thing that I bet you're going to sit there and go, "I didn't know that existed." 
This is Sean Sandilands, producer Sean. In Cousin June, of Kyle, by the way. <laughs> in June 2015, speaking on 7 News about the opening of a new tunnel in Brisbane. The barricades come down at around 9 o'clock and among those hoping to be first through is tunnel enthusiast Sean Sandilands. <laughs> it's just an exciting new way. Um, you look at 10 years ago, we didn't have any tunnels and now we've got three. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> A tunnel enthusiast, are you? Yes, a tunnel enthusiast! Sean, look. I told you when you started that you needed to appear normal. <laughs> <laughs> look, you don't know how exciting it is to go through a tunnel the first yeah. time. Oh. Yes. Well, Adelaide let's... doesn't have any of them, except for in the hills. Yeah, I know. Well, let's jump back uh, into this uh, little thing with Channel 7. And um, here's Sean talking about uh, lining up to see such a tunnel. You'll be staking out your spot, so obviously you don't want to cause any traffic issues, but uh, just waiting for uh, that perfect time that they release the gates and you drive on in. Finally, there's a platform for people sending through their texts on 0400-919-919 saying, hey guys, um, any info on the latest tunnels happening in Adelaide? And this man gets very much up and about. Look, I do love a good tunnel. <laughs> I do love a good what does that even mean? Like the tunnels that you drive through, they're do very we, exciting to be. Look, do we bring up your sexuality at this point? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. But you don't say that. You can't say that. Say what? So it's a new little thing we've got going on here, Jody. Where basically it's uh, a space where I can tell you some of the things where I really, really shouldn't have said, mm. only in public. And this has been born through me becoming a cyclist. Yeah. There's a lot of anguish towards cyclists I from drivers. Genuinely don't understand it. Share the road, people. <laughs> you got abused the other day, though. I got abused. I was in, minding my own business in the bike lane. Mm. And then this guy went past toot toot. Fuck off, mate. Like, mm. well, I'm just, honestly, well, how have I inconvenienced you in your day? That's the fact that you're riding a bike. Drive on. Yeah, and I felt that uh, mm. just a couple of days ago as well. So picture me in the city, uh, minding my business, um, veering in and out of traffic like a madman. <laughs> no, you okay, that probably annoyed a few of the drivers. Right. And it's always the tradies who come up next to you or the council workers. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're very open with their feedback. Yeah, yeah they are. And one bloke in particular, which he must have been 50 plus, I reckon. Yeah, right. And my little brain's gone, okay, 50 plus with an earring. <laughs> something to think about there. To which he said, something along the lines of, get off the road or stay off the road before you get hit. You expletive, expletive. Okay. And then bang, and my brain fired back saying, oh, thanks for that Justin Bieber's shit uncle. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought, I'm on. I'm on here. I've absolutely owned this bloke. But then his younger passenger, oh, and this no. is where it really, really turned. His yeah. younger passenger, and I'm not joking here, turned over because we'll stop the traffic lights and said, I've been listening to you on Nova. Oh, no. Yes. And I went, oh, okay, this could be positive. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you're just like Fitzy if Fitzy was a bloke and not funny <laughs> <laughs> and then so I've gone oh my god I've got two seconds to respond here oh no work brain work what have you got here yeah and my brain showed me a picture of Ryan Fitzgerald and all my brain said to me was Fitzy <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got I said okay and I wrote off oh. and that was it so there you go oh. This is Jody and the poor man's Fitzy on Nova. <laughs> it's that time of the day. Um, we like to call it Jody's Diary, but I feel like it's a chance for Jody just to have a crack at me. Anyway, enjoy. Jody's Diary. Dear Diary. Well, what an absolute shit show it's been this week. Normally it's Andrew who stuffs up, but on this occasion I squarely blame another Andrew. The suburb. Except from Andrew's Farms. Andrew's Farm. <laughs> Sorry. Andrew's I, Farms. I didn't know that Andrew owned several farms. <laughs> I thought he just had the one. And my other suburb nemesis made a return. Right. Let's go to Rebecca from Seafood Meadows. Who's team you on from Seafood Meadows? And apparently I really like to double down on information. That's right. Every single game. Plus it comes with full reciprocal rights to other venues like the MCG and Marvel Stadium. Which one's the Western, Dan? 
Western side. Uh, I think that's on the western side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Every single game, plus it comes with full reciprocal rights to other footy venues like the MCG and Marvel Stadium. We crossed to LA to speak to the consummate pro Sonia Kruger, who spoke about another pro that once got caught up with Hugh Grant in the back of a car. He's had a bit of a history in his life. There have been a few things that have gone down to the pardon the pun, uh, but there was some interesting, some interesting press a while back in Hollywood, corner of Hollywood and Vine, as I remember correctly, something like that. Diary, I revealed that my husband has organised a two-week trip overseas in Europe, leaving me at home with the kids, which was really well received by my loyal team. I think we can safely um, start this chant. Greg, Greg, <laughs> Greg, 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 Greg. Turns out they love my husband as much as Hazy and I unashamedly love Chad Kruger. The fact that Avril hasn't been nominated for about 46 years because she hasn't had a hit for a while. Is she Canadian? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought to get rid of protesters, she just would have played a bit of the X's music. In saying that, can I just say? Yeah. I don't want to be one of those people that hates on Nickelback for no reason. Oh, never hate on Nickelback. I love them. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> In saying that, I could not find that in the system. Okay. Had to bring it in from an outside source. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and finally, Hazy joined the shit show. A big show coming up as well. Judge Jody. Yes, she returns with mm. a dilemma. Whoops. What? No. Judge <laughs> Jody. Sorry, I said What's the wrong thing. How ridiculous. I was like, hang on, Judge Jody. That was yesterday. Jimmy, Jimmy. And I'm the one who's saying that. Get the wrong uh, sheet here. That's okay. Here we go. I'm dead alive. It turns out he's the ringmaster. Has Evelyn just swooped in and become the queen of maths? Yeah, she had. Something I didn't know that producer Zoe told me she partied with Justin Bieber and they might have hooked up. Then you had some gossip of your own this morning. Do you know what my brain just said? What? <laughs> producer Zoe just hooked up with Justin Bieber. Like Wait, <laughs> Justin Bieber. Hooked up with Evelyn from Mass, not producer Zoe with Justin Timberlake. And then you had some goss about Devin Booker. <laughs> so Justin Timberlake hooked up with producer Sean, who's yes. married to Zoe, who's in a relationship with Abby, who's married to producer Sean. He had one job, and that was, that was to talk about Devin Booker and Jenna Ortega from Wednesday. <laughs> Devin is a type of meat. Wednesday is a day of the week. And he was so happy for Alicia, he congratulated her twice. Let's go to Alicia from Aberfoyle Park. You're coming tonight. Amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll see you tonight. Shaw from Pennington. Yeah. <laughs> Feel like having a bit of a party on a Thursday night? Yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tonight. Alicia. Yeah, I'm still here. We just spoke to Alicia. <laughs> we just spoke to Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just went back. No, just pushing all these buttons like, oh, what's this one do? What's this one do? And they just sort of all mash together. That's fine. All right. <laughs> do you want to go back to Alicia again? <laughs> hey, can we call Alicia again? We'd like to speak for the third time. Please. So to Alicia, well done once again. Congrats also to producer Zoe and Justin Timberlake on their burgeoning romance. And to my absent husband, have a great weekend. Well, there you go. Just another opportunity to really air your thoughts, which actually really destroy my heart. Oh. Just kidding. It was a lot of fun. Hazy is not here at the moment, and I will tell you why. So you might remember a few weeks ago we got this call from Scott from Seaford. Now, Scott has a theory about you and another high-profile person in Adelaide, and he's joins us on the line because I want to let him tell you what his theory is. Good morning, Scotty. Yes, good morning. Go for it. Tell Hazy what you think. Well, I think that he is duping the South Australian public, and I think he is, in fact, the Premier Peter Malinowskis in disguise. We need to debunk this theory, so give us a couple of days, Scotty, and uh, we'll see if we can get the uh, PM in the same room as myself. So that was that. And then we needed to prove the theory to the people of Adelaide that Hazy and our Premier Peter Malinowskis were in fact two different people. So enter the big dog. 
Good morning. Morning, Jody. Morning, morning, Hazy. We needed to get you in the same room at the same time to dispel the myth that you are one and the same person. I, I can honestly say that there's a far better looking rooster across the road from me here, and that's Hazy. Don't know about that. So while he was in the studio, the Premier revealed that he thought he could give Hazy's job a bit of a crack. Plus, he could probably do a better job, and I agree. What we might get you to do next week, come back in, jump over that side of the desk, and then you can be Premier for a day. Ooh. Are we happy with this arrangement? No. What could possibly go wrong? I'm looking forward to um, going to a press conference and then getting asked these questions, and then that monkey with the tambourine starts playing. (laughs) (laughs) There he is. Trying to concentrate here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll see you next week, Premier. Sounds good. So what we have this morning is a good old-fashioned job swap. The top man is in the building and coming up next, Premier Peter Malinowskis takes over the show as we bring to you Jody and Nally on Note. Good morning, Adelaide. Welcome back to Jody and Mally on Nova. Oh, I love the sound of that. So um, the Premier has taken over this morning in a bid to prove that Hazy and Mally are different people. They've job swapped. And so um, Hazy will be running the state for today. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Premier? Oh, in- entirely relaxed about it. I yeah. Mean, what could possibly go wrong? I think uh, everything's going to be solved in the next sort of 24 hours. <laughs> Ramping crisis will be finished. Uh, I have no doubt that the NFL Super Bowl will be uh, making its way to to Adelaide in in short time. So I think the state's in good hands. Premier, are you happy to play a little game uh, we like to call Dead or Alive? Producer Zoe joins us now. Good morning. Can I reveal that you have a big crush on the Premier? Well, you have now. (laughs) (laughs) Jody and Hazy's Dead or Alive. Or alive, where it's a little game that I play, usually coffee's on the line. Right. If you're off the hook, I'll buy coffees today. But, <laughs> but we're going to quiz you on a couple of celebrities. You just have to tell me if you think they're dead or alive, and it'll be a competition between you. Okay. So, I'm going to start strong with... So, so is it uh, me first, or is it me versus... Switch it up. I'll okay. throw it to okay. you guys. Okay. Right. First up, Daniel Michael DeVito Jr., also known as Danny DeVito. You're a kid, right? What do you mean, bust my chops here and make them believe you're a regular person? <laughs> no way to American actor, comedian, filmmaker, he gained prominence for his portrayal of the taxi dispatcher Louis De Palma in the television series Taxi, which won him a Golden Globe Award and an Emmy Award. He was born in November 1944. Mally, dead or alive? Alive. Decisive. <laughs> Jody, dead or alive? I have no recollection of him dying, so I'm mm. going to say alive. Ding, ding. Well done. You're both All correct. Right. Off to All a right. strong start. Right. Excellent. This is good. This is good. All right. All right. Next up. Aretha Franklin. What you are, An American singer, songwriter and pianist referred to as the Queen of Soul. She has twice been placed ninth in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time. With global sales of over 75 million records, Franklin is one of the world's best-selling music artists. Born March 1942, dead or alive. Jodie, you start us off this time. She died. Dead. Oh. Great news for the score, bad news for Aretha. Uh, next. <laughs> All right, last one. This will be a real test. Okay. Okay. All right. John Wayne Olsen, former Australian politician, diplomat, and football commissioner. He was Premier of South Australia between November 96 and October 2001. His other titles have included President of the Federal Liberal Party, Chairman of the Australian American Association, Chairman of the Adelaide Football Club, and Deputy Chairman of the Adelaide Oval State and Management Authority. He was born in June 1945. Mally, dead or alive? Very much alive. Jody. Well, you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I'm going to say he... Maybe I'll go out on a limb, mm. because if I go out on a limb, I might win this thing. You might. I'm going to say he died. Congrats, Mally. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> He's uh, well and truly alive, old John. I felt confident about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dean yeah. DeVito, not so much. I know, I just, uh, yeah. I wanted to roll the dice because yeah. I could have won it. Uh, well, the good news is you're buying coffee, not me. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Mally, for joining us, the Dead or Alive, Mally edition. Well done. Premier, thank you so much for coming in. My absolute pleasure. Good to be back here in Jody and Mally on Breakfast Radio. <laughs>